Hello everyone, I wanted to record a tutorial really quick because I finally found a solution to something that I had been looking for a solution for for a long time. So if you have ever tried to create clouds in Blender's shader editor, th there may be no problem if you're trying to create a very thin kind of wispy cloud that has very soft edges, but maybe you're going for one of those uh, cumulus clouds, I forget what kind of cloud it is, but the ones that look like cauliflower. And in real life, those clouds have a very solid edge. They're, they're, very, they're very dense and very thick. Uh, they don't really fade out around the edges. They look like almost a, a solid object, like a piece of cauliflower. Um, and if you're trying to create that, maybe you have, you have made this, this uh, setup to create clouds in Blender. And uh, maybe you even have something like a greater than uh, math node so that it, it should, the, the density should just be solid only up to, to the edge. So it's either cloud or it's not cloud. And you look at your cloud and it still looks very thin around the edges. It looks like it, it still fades. So you figure, well, no problem. I'll just multiply the, the density until it's, until it's a much thicker, more solid cloud. And you keep turning the density up and nothing happens. Maybe you even try... Uh, trying to make the density a million or uh, a billion or a trillion and nothing seems to be happening to the density. The edges are still very soft and kind of fade out, fade out around the edges. Put that back where I had it. Um, <clears throat> now some people might say, well, what you need to do is you need to d um, use a VDB file or maybe generate uh, your cloud and geometry nodes. That's not what we're going to do in this tutorial, but just to make a point, let me show you what is wrong with doing it that way. So I have actually made the same system in Geometry Nodes. I've created the same basic shape of clouds uh, here. So let me let me turn my system on just, just to show how this works. Um, wait for that to load. Okay. And let me cut this off. And we get these, we get these blocky shapes, uh, but that's... That's really not the biggest problem. Um, in order to get my density to show up from geometry nodes, I have to add an attribute node and set it to DNSITY density and plug this in so that the density information from geometry nodes works in, in the shader editor. And at first this seems to work fine. If we look at that, if we see what kind of sunlight uh, comes through, we see that the, the clouds look, look very solid. They're, they're very, very dense and very thick. Um, but if we if we look more in the sunlight over here, we will see the problem with using uh, something like a VDB file or um, or generating a, a cloud in geometry nodes. That is, we have voxels. That is three-dimensional volumetric pixels. So we get a cloud that looks like it came from Minecraft. And that's why I don't want to use this uh, method for creating my clouds. I want to do it in Shader Editor so that we get this, this nice um, smooth shape to a cloud. But we want to have the benefit of the, the, the density that, that Blender gives us with the voxels. So we are going to use that. We are going to use the best of both worlds. Um, now, why, why does this work in the first place? I think the reason that the density looks better with a voxelated cloud is because uh, with the system I had before, which let me just turn that off and plug my own, uh, my own system in. If I go to solid view here, you see I just have a big cube and I'm generating my clouds within that. And I think th this leads to very thin looking clouds because Blender is just um, uh, e evaluating the, the density of this object once through, through this entire cube. But if we use our, our voxel system, and let that load again. I think the reason the density looks better is because Blender is, my theory anyway, that Blender kind of re-evaluates the density through each voxel. So therefore, the density looks more looks more accurate. So, how can we have the benefit of that while having the benefit of a completely shader created uh, volumetric cloud? Well, let me show you how to do that. So I'm going to go back to my um, solid view. I'm going to delete my uh, object that I have, I have created and add a cube. So just pretend you're starting with the default cube. I'll pretend you're starting with the default cube. And we are going to add a geometry nodes modifier to, to this. And in here, I'm going to add a volume cube. And I'm going to put that vol volume cube over, over that noodle that we had there, which will get rid of our cube that we created with. 
And we're not going to do anything with the density. We're going to leave it exactly as, as, as it is at 1, because the density does not matter. We just need there to be density. So we'll just leave it a density of 1 so that we have our voxel information. Uh, and one more important thing, uh, if you haven't added a material yet um, that you're going to create your clouds with, go ahead and add one. I'm just going to use the material that I already made so that I don't have to remake the system uh, that I made to create clouds. And I'm going to call that material clouds just to make it easier for me to find. Go back to my modifiers. And very important, don't forget to add a set material node so that our volume cube here knows that we want to use that material that we created. And I actually want that to be accessible from our modifier, so I'm going to add uh, an input into that material. And now let's go over here and add our clouds material to that. And one more thing that we will need to use later on, uh, one more input, is I'm, I want to be able to control our resolution, our voxel rate, from, from this modifier very, very easily. I'm just going to plug the same one into, into all of them, just for simplicity. I'm going to rename that to just resolution. Uh, I actually want that to be above my material, if I can get it there. So now we just have this nice little geometry nodes modifier where we can control the, the resolution and we can set the material that we want. Now that we have our material selected, let's see what this looks like in rendered view. So you would add this material and you would create whatever system that you want to generate your clouds with. That's not what this tutorial is about, but maybe maybe I'll make a tutorial about making clouds once I get a little bit more practice with that itself. Um, and let's see what that looks like. Now it seems to work fine. Now keep in mind, I, I do have this attribute node here. That actually is the secret sauce. So before you even start creating your cloud procedurally, I would suggest that you add an attribute node as I did and type in density, D-E-N-S-I-T-Y. This will port our voxel stuff from geometry nodes into our into our shader editor so that Blender now knows that we want to use that voxel information in this material. Uh, now that might have worked for you. Now, now that you've added this, maybe your cloud looks fine. Maybe it's kind of invisible. Um, if that's so, you can try a few different things. You might select your material again. Um, what I did one time before I recorded this tutorial was I added a random node, like say uh, a mix node, and you just take this factor, just plug that into some random node. Uh, that did it for me. Um, and if that doesn't work, maybe this is a bug that is fixed in the future in Blender. Um, so what you might have to do, uh, just in case it's not working for you yet, um, you might plug your system that you made and mix it in with this voxel data, which of course will give us this kind of foggy cube around it. So you might set it to a mix factor of zero, um, but that might mess things up for you. Maybe your, th your clouds will become thinner again because it's discounting this data because it's to zero, maybe. If that's the case, maybe mix it in uh, just 1%, 0.01. And if you're worried about thin little particles of fog still showing up throughout the rest of the cube, uh, then a fix for that would be adding a math node, which you can uh, search for math. I have my own keyboard shortcut for adding math nodes because I use them so much. Set it to multiply and put that over this noodle and set it to a multiply of zero. So there's zero density, there's zero fog. It, it'll just bring down the density of, of your system by like 1%. Uh, but like I said, maybe maybe this is already working for you. Maybe maybe just porting that in. And the reason this works is uh, we are telling Blender that we want to use the the voxel system for uh, evaluating the density of of our cloud. But we don't want to actually use that density for the shape of our cloud. For the shape of our cloud, we want to generate it completely procedurally within shaders. So we get that nice a smooth, detailed uh, cloud shape, or maybe whatever volume object you're, you're trying to make. You get that nice smooth shape from the procedural system that you have done in the shader, uh, but you get the uh, the density reevaluation at a voxel rate uh, for for the density from, from the geometry nodes. And one final thing is, 
if you look at your clouds and they're still not quite as thick as you want them to be, they're, they still kind of fade around the edges, they're still kind of thin, too much of a silver lining, that's why we exposed the resolution here. Because if, if, we, if you notice, if we turn the resolution down to like 2, um, that is actually what controls uh, how dense our clouds look, aside from whatever density you have here. How often Blender reevaluates the density at the vix uh, vixel voxel rate. So maybe you can try turning that up to like 64. Already that looks a lot thicker than uh, 32 did, yeah, uh, or 128. Again, keeping in mind that the higher you turn up the, re the resolution, uh, the slower uh, Blender might be for you. Actually, that's not too bad for me. Um, but the point is, is you probably won't have to turn the resolution quite so high as you would if you were using that to actually generate the shape of the clouds. So we're just getting that for the density and we're generating generating the shape our own way in shader nodes. Um, I think that's I think that's all. It's pretty simple if, if you think this is simple. Um, I know that you guys are, are very smart, so whatever you use this knowledge for, um, I hope you have fun and I hope it helps. And I can't wait to see you in the next tutorial or whatever video, whatever kind of video I upload next. <laughs>